Hey, what's up guys? It's day four of the BPS parts. I got the toolpath mostly dialed down. Yesterday we got the soft jaws made and pretty successful. I'm pretty sure there's footage right before this scene about that. Um, so now we're basically going to uh, cut four pieces of stock and see if we can get four complete parts out. So yeah, check it out. Let's check out that ramp we just did. Ramp in the bottom horizontal. Chatter's not as bad as the last parts. Sweet. Next up is a. Uh, I don't remember. Oh boy, what did we win? An ocean, apparently. Interesting. Alright, then we use this long boy to cut that right there. Alright, so that was going relatively well. <laughs> you will. Until we got to the ball part. So, it's pretty nice. I mean, these, these are really nice. Yeah, no, the blend lines are not... I don't blend too good. And then there's this really weird mark. So, definitely the ball I know was the uh, not so good on this one. Yeah. So, I need to remember to drill this hole, and then we'll flip it over and we'll put it over in the soft jaws. Alright, we're gonna run up two in the soft jaws. I should be able to polish this line out, but I changed the tool paths uh, for op one again, and we'll try it on the next one. And yeah, just did some reordering of things, so uh, yeah. Hey guys, I'd like to introduce you into the new probing system from Renishaw. It's called the Invisiprobe, and it works by pure magic. Uh, it's really simple. You uh, tell the probe where your part is in Fusion, and it uses a invisible laser to set your XYZ. Pretty freaking amazing! Alright guys, welcome to day 5, I think, of making parts for BPS Space. Uh, let's see, what did I end on with yesterday? Oh yeah, I snapped the probe off. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording, so just let's go over what I did. Um, so I had G55 set to this zero, and then I wanted to check and make sure that G55 was correct. So I punched in a bunch of, bunch of fancy numbers into the control here and hit go. But what I did was type in G54 instead of G55. And it rapided right over to where G54 was, which was over here, and this block was here, and the probe done snapped the tip off. So, uh, that was a $135 mistake, because those tips are meant to break, but they are $135 a piece. So, they're ceramic with a ruby on the end. So, the ceramic obviously is nice and brittle when it hits something, and it can't move, it breaks. So, 
good for me. The body actually costs thirty six hundred dollars, so you don't want to hit this. And um, let's see, I think that's it. Yeah, I just indicated it in with the tenth indicator. It took me over an hour and a half to indicate it, but that's because I suck. So we did that. Then we did the uh, ring gauge where you uh, you uh, dial in the diameter of it on the table. So uh, yeah, okay. Um, let's see. So here is what we got yesterday. Um, I polished it up. I have a uh, nice polishing wheel on the grinder. But you can still see the marks from the ball end mill as of late. And then of course the backside looks nice because it's nice and rigid. And you can't feel the tooling marks. They're, uh, they're just visual. So I changed up the a couple of the tool paths. And uh, yeah, we'll give this one a shot. I'm also going to record on the GoPro uh, 240 frames per second, slow it down, see how that looks. So yeah, let's get right into it. So what I'm currently doing here is I'm cleaning these up with acetone and uh, paper towels. I ended up making nine of these guys. Uh, the footage, there is so much of it that it's really difficult for me to go through at this stage of my 
my uh, video production career. So that's kind of why it seems kind of broken up. Uh, yeah, it was a fun project. Um, basically, I had four of them that were pristine, and then I have just had some extras for Joe um, that were not so pristine. Not too difficult of a project, but a good challenge nonetheless. Obviously, you saw I had difficulties with the, the shatter marks on the actual top fin part where the ball end mill, the top flutes, where there was no flutes, it was actually recutting or rubbing chips up against the side. Um, I mean, other than that, the front radius with the long cutter, that was a little difficult at first. I had a lot of chatter, but then I figured out a good pull path. And then obviously the backside and the soft jaws went really well. And I mean, now I can spit these out, good condition, all of them off the machine with very minor polishing. So all in all, a really fun, fun project. I'm hoping Joe uh, has some more stuff for me. Um, I think it's, it's a really fun time to be able to kind of collaborate like this. And uh, yeah, if you guys like what you saw, please uh, hit the subscribe button, do the like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers by the end of the year. I think that's a pretty reasonable goal, unlike most of my very unreasonable goals. Uh, some things I'm working on, I'm working on a fourth axis fixture for a three jaw chuck. I have actually more parts, not for Joe, but for a couple of the uh, Discord members that I'm now a part of. Uh, from doing these with the you know these Joe parts, uh, so that's that'll be pretty cool. They're pretty thin parts, and I have a vacuum chuck on order from Pearson Work Holding, and we'll kind of do a video about that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be all a good time, and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your uh, fantastic February.